Burst after burst of involuntary cheers from the whole crowd proclaimed the triumph of the Yankee Reaper. In 70 seconds, McCormick had become famous. He was the Lion of the Owl. It could be said that agriculture began 5,000 years ago in Egypt. The Egyptians invented many farm implements, including the sickle, the first tool for cutting grain. The inefficient sickle was widely used until Joseph Lynn invented the scythe for the better cutting of grass. While the scythe performed better, it too was extremely slow. It was followed by the invention of the cradle, which was also sluggish and heavy. To harvest with these implements was backbreaking, time-consuming, and required lots of manpower. In the 19th century, a Virginian farmer, Robert McCormick, would attempt to build a mechanical harvesting tool, a reaper, to correct these problems. He failed numerous times. McCormick's son, however, did not give up on the idea. In 1831, his ingenuity would revolutionize agriculture around the world. It seems as though the McCormick Reaper started the ball of prosperity rolling. It has been rolling ever since. Cyrus McCormick, born in 1809 in the Shenandoah Valley of Virginia, grew up on his father's farm. He hated the slow, back-breaking work of harvesting. His father gave him a gift in 1831 which would change his life, his failed attempt at a mechanical reaper. McCormick loved to tinker and invented several farm implements. He took his father's failed machine and designed his own reaper. Cyrus's first successful reaper had seven elements necessary in order to reap properly. A straight reciprocating knife, fingers to hold the wheat for cutting, a reel which gathered the cut wheat, a platform where the gathered wheat was raked, a main wheel which turned the gears of the machine, the principle of cutting on one side of the draft, and a divider which divided the standing grain from the grain which is to be cut. Cyrus McCormick was the first to combine all seven elements. This combination was revolutionary. McCormick tested his reaper late in the harvest of 1831. It surprised all who witnessed it as the reaper cut the equivalent of twelve laborers working with scythes. One observer noted, the cutting was rapid and extremely clean, scarcely a stalk of grain being left. Another declared, it is worth $100,000. McCormick, however, thought his early work was crude and full of innumerable difficulties. He was dismayed by the limited time available to test during each harvest. Because of these concerns, McCormick waited before finally applying for a patent in 1834 a delay that would create a controversial reaction. Before the reaper, it took 37 man-hours to reap and bind one acre of grain. McCormick's first reaper took just 11 hours. By 1885, improvements would cut that time to three hours. By the year 1900, nearly every farmer in the United States had a reaper. A revolution had taken place. The reactions, however, would be mixed from acceptance and joy in the agricultural world to accusation and lawsuits from inventors around the world. The Reaper worked a great revolution, enabling one man to do the work that many had been doing, and doing it better. Cyrus McCormick invented a revolutionary Reaper, but what would farmers think of his machine? The answer was immediate. Farmers across the nation, and eventually the world, loved it. One early farmer declared, a man with a scythe could never cut it, grain, like that. Another stated the reaper's simple achievement. There is certainly less wheat left in the field by one of these machines than is by the ordinary method of reaping by the scythe. While some grumbled about machines replacing the work of a man, most farmers were sold on the reaper, and McCormick began to construct and sell them in large quantities. His McCormick Harvesting Machine Company established one of the first factories in the new city of Chicago in order to produce reapers. Not everyone shared the farmer's joy. Many inventors were angry as they believed that they deserved the credit for the mechanical reaper. McCormick's delay in getting a patent allowed for many others to lay claim to the revolution. The largest rival was a New England sailor and inventor. 
Obed Hussey invented his reaper in 1833, two years after McCormick, but before the McCormick patent. His machine had no reel or divider, making it simpler to build, but limited its ability to work in some conditions. Hussey and others hired several prominent lawyers to fight McCormick's patent when it came up for extension. Abraham Lincoln, William Seward, and Edwin Stanton helped represent the opposition. One advertisement read, McCormick can be beaten in the patent office and must be beaten, now or never. McCormick was beaten. The patent judge held that he, McCormick, will live in the grateful recollection of mankind as long as the reaping machine is employed. But the reaper is a too great of value to the public to be controlled by any individual. The reaper was to be shared, but McCormick would not so easily give up his claim on the revolutionary machine. Men and women flocked to see the implement which, from the other side of the Atlantic, has come to effect so important a revolution in the labor of the harvest field. Cyrus McCormick challenged the makers of other reapers to public competitions around the world. What he could not win in a courtroom, he would win in the field. McCormick sent a reaper to the 1851 London Fair, where the London Times sneered, It is a cross between an Ashley chariot, a wheelbarrow, and a flying machine. In a later article, after the McCormick reaper handily defeated a hussy machine, the Times ate its words. The reaping machine from the United States is the most valuable contribution from abroad. Harvesting wars for the respective merits of each machine popped up all over the globe. After one battle, one farmer stated, I do not think that I could be induced to return to the old mood of cutting grain. When the McCormick Reaper won a victory in Paris, Horace Greeley wrote that the victory is more beneficial and credible for the United States than if 50,000 of her troops had defeated 100,000 choice European soldiers. McCormick warranted his machine to be superior. American newspapers agreed. McCormick's reapers are just the things for our prairies. The true worth of the revolutionary reaper was proved with the oncoming of the Civil War. Hundreds of thousands of men enlisted, creating many soldiers who needed to be fed and leaving few to harvest the crops. Secretary of War Edwin Stanton spoke to the importance of McCormick and his reaper. The reaper is to the north what slavery is to the south. By taking the place of regiments of young men in the western harvest field, it released them to do battle for the Union at the front, and at the same time keeps up the supply of bread for the nation and the nation's army. Without McCormick's invention, I fear the North could not win and the Union would be dismembered. A past opponent was now praising the revolutionary reaper for being a deciding factor in the Civil War. The Reaper started out as a very simple machine. Fueled by overwhelming success, Cyrus McCormick quickly began to make improvements to his simple machine, tilting the platform for sorting, adding a zinc sheet for easier raking, and adding a seat. By 1847, McCormick's improvements were done. His company turned to purchasing others' patents and manufacturing them. He soon produced the Adkins self-rake, the Marsh Reaper, the Worthington Self Binder, and the Appleby Twine Binder. The Lion of the Hour, Cyrus McCormick, would die in 1884, but not before starting and witnessing a revolution in agriculture. In 1915, the International Harvesting Company would be the first to take several of the patents and combine them into one machine, creating the Combined Harvester. 180 years later, the Combine is still considered the workhorse of harvesting machinery. In many ways, this implement is an upgraded mechanical reaper combined with a thresher and then covered with sheet metal. This combine now feeds billions. McCormick's reaper did not simply make farming easier. It revolutionized agriculture and the world forever. It is just unbelievable what we could do today. The reaper was the spark that triggered that.